All right, I'm getting ready to enjoy another episode of My Hero Academia. Having so much fun with these early episodes of the show. Absolutely hope that it holds me this closely through, you know, all the episodes. Because I love finding something new to discover, something that's not going to run out too quickly. But we saw a little bit of advancement from Deku last episode. We learned to kind of focus the all for one power in one finger. And he just, you know broke the bones in the tip of one finger instead of breaking his whole body. So he's making some progress. He's finding new tricks, you know, quote unquote tricks, new ways to accomplish what he needs to. So I imagine we'll find out a little something new on each of the next few episodes. So let's see what we find on this one. Yeah, we're just kind of having that recap when he put that all for one power right in his fingertip and just kind of push the ball forward. I love that. You know, I, I just didn't like see that coming. That one was a nice sneaky one on me. So that's kind of his first step towards learning to control his power. I wonder if he'll get a little more respect from this Azawa guy that seemed to have been pretty tough on him in the first episode. I know the feedback I've gotten is a lot of people like this character, so I assume there's a more lovable side to him yet to be shown. <laughs> All right. During the OP, I do like to remind folks that I have a Patreon. I know a lot of you are already members of the Patreon. Uh, but if you kind of want to go see what's going on over there, you're not a member, curious to see what's up, there should be a link in the video description. Occasionally, I forget to put it in there, but there should be a link to the video description. All right. So we're back at the field, you know, for the field events, field day. His finger appears to be broken now. Just... Looks like uh, everybody's picked up on what's going on with him pretty quickly here, especially the guy I like to call Clark Kent over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hot hands here is having a hard time accepting that uh, the uh, target of his bullying actually has a little something going on for him. <laughs> He's got those hot hands warmed up. Uh oh. Are there rules against attacking your classmates when it's not part of the uh, exam or the? Yeah, good, good. The teacher with his swipey bandage scarf thing was able to restrain him. Oh, they're explaining the scarf. <laughs> oh, you know, I had some negative things to say about the teacher in the last class, but kind of growing on me with that dry eye comment. A nice description of what his power is, but I didn't understand about the not blinking part until somebody pointed out to me in the comments on the last episode, so that does explain the red eyes and the using the eye drops. Oh, no. Bakugan feels humiliated. That makes someone dangerous. Oh my goodness. This could go very badly. I mean, is Bakugan there going to turn into a villain? Oh, they even show Deku kind of being a, <laughs> a fanboy for hot hands there when they were little kids. Now he can't handle being outshone by the, the guy he always considered an underling. Rage, you D A M N nerd. Now that. Is a good name, I guess. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see, uh, you know, the the inspiration for the title as this episode unfolds. Oh, we have a class ranking here. I want to see where Deco comes out on the very bottom. Is what I'm guessing. Oh no, is he going to be next to last? <laughs> oh, oh, is there going to be some other uh, tricky thing that comes up here? Like you get bonus points for doing it without your power or something. Just like there were bonus points on the last exam he did. How much time does he have to move up on that uh, board there? Oh, it's a little psychological torture. We want you to know where you rank. <laughs> no, they're not responding well to having been tricked about the uh, parameters of this thing they just did. People talking tough now that uh, it's over with and nobody's on the line anymore. It's pretty easy to talk tough after the fact, isn't it? I'm curious what the next obstacle school's going to hold for him is. Oh, he's going back to the lady that likes to give him some sugar. She's just going to kiss his finger, I guess, this time. Yeah, maybe it's the extra motivation he needs. But that's kind of how this sort of storytelling works, right? Your protagonist has to struggle profusely before becoming the greatest hero ever. You know, makes us respect where they end up. All might. So you were watching. 
and we can relate to obstacles even if we don't always overcome them. This is nice how you see the difference in their personalities here between All Might and Azawa there. How they don't probably have the same philosophy on training people. He likes Deku. <laughs> that they're seeing eye to eye on Deku, so he changed the rules. That's pretty cool. It almost sounds like you. Yeah, Snape here's winning me over. Straight home after class without hesitation. I do like this little conversation between the two teachers, and I think it's given me a little bit better respect for this Azawa guy that I had last episode. Oh, it'll be interesting to see. I guess it just comes down to your natural fisticuffs if you try to fight with Aizawa and he takes away your superpowers. And it's just good old-fashioned slap fight. Oh, ho, ho, looks like he had a rough... Oh, it's the sugar. Give him some sugar on his finger. I love that old lady with her kissing power to heal things up. She's a lot of fun. Oh, that voice on her is great, too. <laughs> and she got a Pez dispenser after healing him. <laughs> uh, oh well, you just might die. It's no big deal. Oh man, Goody Two Shoes. I think I'm really gonna enjoy the d character development with Goody Two Shoes. Hopefully, he sticks around for multiple seasons. I want to see him become more cynical and hard-edged as he lives a painful life. Was that Float Girl? Yeah. Oh, oh, are we going to get a romantic love triangle to form here? Yeah, isn't that what Bakugo called you? <laughs> Everybody's called him Deku now. You know what? I like Deku. <laughs> I make a great hero. All the back and forth over his name there. So once, <laughs> I love it. Once the pretty girl said she thinks Deku's cute, <laughs> he's all in now. Everything. He's getting tattoos, Deku, all over his chest. Getting like personalized belt buckle that says Deku. It's easy to convince him. <laughs> but he's reflected back on uh, what a character building several months he's had here. Oh, he's like uh, having a mental soliloquy. Theoretically addressing Deku there. All right, so he said the real test starts tomorrow, and I'm assuming that what we are seeing now is the tomorrow which he was referring to yesterday. Not today. Which would make it tomorrow. <laughs> Get them all excited about diagramming sentences. That is a nice looking cafeteria. You should see where I went to school. The cafeteria was, you know, did the job at all. Oh, it was so little and old. Look how nice this one looks. Like, what a nice walkway. Those heroes, those snooty heroes, are spoiled with these excellent school facilities. <laughs> All Might's actually in a superhero costume instead of a suit. He's putting on a nice little uh, show for everybody. Try to enter with a splash. I like that referring to the Silver Age costume, like legit comic book fan kind of stuff. When there's a live action adaptation or animated adaptation. We always comment on which costume they're going with. What's it look closest to? This is great. <laughs> and I love just cheesing for the class. He is all cheesing for the class here. And then what? They're going to some combat training from All Might. <laughs> I like it all about flair. Oh, new costumes for everybody. They're going to be costumes suited to their powers, too. So we're really going to start to get the character to come out. And a little more, like, differences between them so they don't all just look uniform in their, well, uniforms. Let's see what they got here. Oh, wow. Those are some legit superhero costumes. It's like a fashion show from heaven here. I love this kind of stuff. Oh, they got, like, casings for his calves, for his jet, jet packs. I love it. Oh man, they got like hand grenades for Bakugan there. And then some of them, I don't even know who they are. Where's Deku? I want to see what they got Deku. Oh man. So now this can absolutely turn into a fashion show if we get a good look at each of the costumes. Oh. 
so that's how they uh, got appropriate costumes. I like his with the exhaust things, the hand grenades. Really nice art going into this, and I like how they're showing us that. Belt buckle French man, his costume, eh. A weenie costume for a weenie power, I guess. Uh-oh. He's going to get, what's he going to get now? Just a pair of pants? And a stretchy shirt? Okay, so even though he registered as no quirk, they're going to be able to fix this for him. Because I thought it would be kind of funny if further sort of causing, contributing to Deku's struggle here is if he has a suit that isn't suited to his quirk. So unlike other people, maybe get some support from the structure and function of their suits. He has one more handicap there, but I guess that's not going to happen. And Mama's here. Well, what she got for him? She got him a jumpsuit? <laughs> Let's see what she got, Deku. Did he design his own? Did she give him rabbit ears? This would be great if his suit has rabbit ears. This is nice. Like, I think this is really touching. His mom kind of apologizing for not supporting him in his dream to become a superhero earlier on in his endeavors. And now she's coming around. She's apologizing. And when your first superhero costume is made for you from your mom, and he does have rabbit ears. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. I know they're not really rabbit ears. It's to mimic All Might's hair. But I'm telling you, he's rabbit boy. <laughs> he looks like rabbit man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to see how they uh, modify Deku's suit or if he stays the green bunny man throughout season one. <laughs> I don't think All Might likes the bunny ears. <laughs> oh, the fake smile. <laughs> he does not appreciate that homage to him. Oh, come on, rabbit boy. I do like the uh, almost makes him look like an android or something. Oh, so they're going to work on indoor fighting. Maybe reduce the uh, reduce the collateral damage is something they'll focus on when you're fighting indoors. Oh, so some of them are going to have to pose as villains? I don't know. I don't know that any of them want to be villains. you got to make them all think they're good guys. That's how it works. I do like this, making it competitive internally within the class. This makes for a lot of good drama. I know I've quoted the heck out of it. I love the book Superpower. It's and this is starting to feel a little bit like that, where they have to compete with one another. This is going to be fun. Listen up. A script. Oh, 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 setting it up so you have to go by floor by floor too, like a little dread or uh, raid redemption. Oh, all right. So. Is Deku going to be a hero or a villain? You know he's going to be a hero. It'd be so weird if Deku was drew up to be a villain. <laughs> he's so incredibly rational there. Clark Kent with the jets and his calves. I'm going to have to start learning some names. <laughs> the pose that Naval Laser takes is almost, but not quite, uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, so we got teamed up. DNA. All right. Let's see how this goes. Get to see the old rivals at it again. Ah, oh, man, I got to say, even though I'm pulling for you, Deku, when it comes to costumes, Bakugan over there has got you beaten. Is it Bakugan, Bakugo? He's got you beaten, man. He's got a cooler costume than you, Rabbit Ears. You kind of remind me of Arthur from The Tick with those things up on your head. Everybody thought Arthur was a bunny instead of a moth. All he needs are retractable wings. Oh, he's telling him to be vicious and mean. Like an evildoer wouldn't be fair. Oh, boy. I... I'm glad that at least somebody who plays by the book has teamed up with the bully boy and the hot hands, but still, I'm worried about how far off the beaten path he's going to go to hurt them. 
Oh, let's see. Are we going to get a little insight, a little flashback? Why? Why is he so angry? Is there more to it? Oh, ho, 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 rage, you D-A-M-N nerd. So, I bet you we get some more insight, right? Of course, everybody told, told me this is written well, so we're going to get more insight into the bully's motivation. I'm positive. Just maybe not this episode. <laughs> he, he's afraid of uh, the bully. Of course, you can understand that. But Baku goes with the guy who plays by the book. That's the only thing you got going for you. And he's amazing. All into more popular than all might have... Oh, wow. He really does have some hubris there. He can be with his goal to be no less than the most famous hero of all time. Yeah. I mean, I can see how... As a surrogate for the viewer, it's so easy to get attached to Deku because he keeps pushing forward. He has, like, the optimistic attitude, even though things are stacked up against him. He keeps digging deeper, finding new ways to do things. Pretty good hero, like, archetypical hero. I can see the appeal. Alright, let's see what kind of fun we have. I bet you this exercise might span more than one episode. Because there's a lot of good potential here. Just another student. And I like this. All Might's going to be unbiased here in his grading of his mentor. Or mentee, I should say. I like this uh, music in the background. This kind of industrial music or whatever. Feels like high-tech cyberpunk stuff going on. So, yeah. Guess I'm going to have to go get a tattoo of Deku's bunny suit. Something tells me I've seen him in a, you know, like on statues and stuff at the store where he has an updated costume, not quite this thing. Yeah, years of notes and dreaming of being a hero is paying off here, I guess. Oh, but here come hand grenade hands. Oh, he got out of the way, thank goodness. Oh, it ripped one of his bunny ears off. How cruel. Come on, his mama sewed that for him and you went and ripped the bunny ear off. Now you're going to get it. All right. What's he got planned? I feel like he's got something up his sleeve. Let's see. Who's everybody cheering for here in the bay? I don't know. Observation bay. Maybe they'll be split. So he's just using good old-fashioned judo. He's not even using his quirk. But you ripped off his bunny ear. You just better hope his mama doesn't find out. Because then you're not going to have to apologize to him. You're going to have to apologize to his mother. And that is going to feel very awkward, Kachan. Oh, you're predictable. <laughs> He's been bullied by you for years, so I know what to expect. It's kind of a cool look, though, the one-eared bunny suit. With his hair popping out one side. What's going on at the back of uh, Bakugan's head? Is that part of his costume or did his hair change? <laughs> Deku proclaiming himself to have been a man. Oh, and he did adopt that as his hero name. That's cool. Yeah, of course, you know, since the girl he was crushing on liked it. We already covered that at the beginning of the episode. Oh, always standing up for people. Always had the heart of a hero. That's what he does. That's what he does. <laughs> I hate you because you lack fear. No, he has fear, but he just has the courage to overcome his fear, right? And that's something Bakugan has all that power. Is it Bakugan, Bakugo? He's got all that power, but he doesn't have the heart and the mentality to go with it. You know, he's a little bit more of a selfish hero. He wants to solve every problem with explosions, which, come on, any good fan of stories and movies and anime and television shows and comic books and novels and stuff you know you can't solve every problem with exploding hands right let's see if there's anything after the credits here all right so they're just going to next time so that means there's no after credits thing so i just want to say i'm proud of you for watching anime and i'll talk to you again soon i just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on patreon it really means a lot to me if you might be interested in Patreon perks like early access to videos, uncut reaction videos, ad-free videos, and the opportunity to vote on which anime will be covered in the future, then click on the link in the video description.
Thank you.